right. We are the brothers of the O. We are the brothers of the K. We've seen and heard teams and groups with Chance and Sands, but have you ever really had the chance to be a part of one? Y'all, my name is DK Lambert, and I've been a part of this program since I was in the sixth grade. So I have the experience and the knowledge to tell you about my uh, tell you about the program. The program I chose today is the OK program of Little Rock. It's a foundation that was just a nice service foundation that was started in Oakland, California, that now has multiple chapters here in Little Rock, Arkansas. So, the mission according to OKProgram.org is partnership between police officers and black men is key to create safe communities, changing the ad visceral relationship between the two and changing a visceral relationship between the two groups. The officers and the men help help our boys develop leadership and critical thinking skills while while. Pro Program's mission is to empower black men and boys to transform their communities. And the ways you can do this, you can either go online and uh, go online to okprogram.org and hit the link that shows you where to sign up, or you can contact either Carl Turner or uh, Officer Williams, which is the head of both chapters here in Little Rock, Arkansas, and they'll help you uh, sign up and everything like that. Or you can just show up to what we call a kicking session, as you can see here and show up and just help the boys. If y'all are wondering, I'm on this picture in the back row to your right side. To your right side. Yeah, that is me back in the day. Yeah. So, there are two concepts that I can use to support, that you can use to support a positive service experience with this organization. The ones I chose is Kinesics. According to Communication in the World War 2016, this comes from the root word kinesis, which begins which means movement and movement and refers to the study of hand, arm, body, and face movements. I chose this one simply because dealing with kids of from sixth grade up to twelfth grade, your body movement, how you react to what they say and what they do really means and speaks value to them. Especially if someone's been there personally. I don't want to be talking to somebody and their body language is pretty much showing me, oh, I really don't care. So you showing that you care, not even with your work, but how you react to everything really means a lot to those kids. I also chose my second one is uh, Vocalics. According to the according to communication of the railroad 2016, it's the study of parent language, which includes the vocal qualities that go along with verbal messages, such as pitch, volume, rate, and pitch, volume, rate, vocal quality, and verbal fillers. This one also holds value simple because, like I said, dealing with kids from 6th to 12th grade, how you speak to them, how you react to anything they say, you don't know if they're used to being yelled at or not being yelled at, so your voice speaks a lot, that tone speaks a lot to them. Now, based, now I can, I can say this, now to show how some, some stuff that will help me in my personal communication schedule skills will be one one of the foundational communication principle I could use to improve my communication based on my service site research will be messages are adapted in different ways to achieve similar results. So in other words to summarize that is how I speak to you and how I speak to someone else are two different ways but I can receive that I can achieve the same similar results by switching up how I talk to each one of you guys. For example, if I'm talking to a sixth grade kid and telling them, hey, you need to do this, but I'm yelling at them, they're not gonna receive it the same way. They might shut down or they might be like, oh, I don't wanna do that. If I happen to yell at a 12, a 12th grade kid, that 12th grade kid might be like, okay, cool, I get what you're saying. I'm gonna go ahead and do it and not feel no type of way about it. An ethical implication I could use to improve my community would be trustworthiness. The definition according to the Department of Applied Communication 22 and 3 is the degree to which the accuracy of our ideas, our ideas are shared into, into can be used by others to make decisions, maintain the trust needed for a healthy communication. I chose this one simply because building somebody's trust in something like this is very, 
is very key simply because you don't know what they come from. You don't know what they're used to. You don't know if they're used to people lying to them all the time. You don't know if they feel like they're there's no one they can trust anything like that. So if you show them that, hey, I can be that trustworthy person or whatever, that you can trust me with everything you're going through and I won't change or leave you behind, that gains their trust. And from that alone, I mean, a lot of them kids in that picture now like my little brothers to me, simply because I gave them, a, I was a person for them to trust. So now to this day, they can come to me about anything and I don't judge them. They talk to me like we have been seeing each other every day for the past three weeks. So that really one means a lot to me. And I use it every day, like I said, I talk to them every day. We're not even every day, every once in a blue moon, whenever they need anything, we keep up with each other on social media. They come to me, they're having relationship issues, family issues, school issues, sports issues, whatever the case may be, because they know they can trust me at the end of the day for anything they need. And yeah, so that's why I chose the OK program as my nonprofit organization. Remember, we are the brothers of the O, we are the brothers of the K. And I got it. <laughs>